Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, November 29th, 8.15 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. We have a Aurora watch tonight, especially tomorrow night, with Aurora pushing all the way down in the low latitudes, thanks to a G3 geomagnetic storm headed our way. Keep calm. It's boom time. All 50 states feel the freeze Wednesday morning as some temperatures plunge to record-breaking cold. Temperatures are running 10 to 20 degrees below average for much of the country following a series of frontal passages and a broad upper trough in place over the eastern and central U.S. And that means snow and cold. Ho, ho, ho. 200 million below average Wednesday, 80 million below average Thursday, and 49 states below freezing on Thursday as well. Here are some of the record lows that we saw. Danville, Virginia, 15, breaking 17 degrees back to 1955. Jackson, Kentucky, 21 degrees this morning. 22 was the record cold back in 2018. Charlotte, North Carolina, 23 degrees very close to the record set back in 2002. And who knew? Elizabeth City, North Carolina, breaking the record cold of 23 back in 1996 by just a degree. Let's take a look. The first major lake effect snowstorm of the season strikes upstate New York, dumping well over two feet of snow. Hey, Fox Weather's Katie Byrne. This is what she had in the thick of it. Almost it's above her deep. knee. That's crazy. I mean, look at the visibility behind her. The snow was piling up past her knee there, Britta. There, Britta, you were talking about. Look at her picking it up. Looks like she's in a snow globe, right? Yeah. And there's the sticks on the side of the road really showing you where the road actually is because you can't even see it. Uh, so we got more snow on the way, by the way. So, uh, you know, clippers, they don't produce tremendous amounts, but look at what's already on the ground. Let's bring in Katie. Uh, good morning, Katie. Kind of nice to be able to see your face this morning. <laughs> I'm sure that's making you feel more comfortable. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting because, you know, this is lake effect snow country. It's a part of life. And although you're surrounded by snow, it's time to get back to business. It's very true, Britta. In fact, I know you guys were talking about how we were using my knees to measure things yesterday. I think we could almost get to the hip uh, based Whoa. on how much snow people are trying to get rid of right now because there is so much of it. And I'm actually not even at the bottom of the snow. I haven't seen the ground yet because that's how thick it is compacted at the bottom. We've got well, clearly they got snow and they have some very poor reporters. Actually, they got up to 40 inches of snow blanketing the Northeast as the storm snarls the morning commute. The National Weather Service said early Wednesday that the areas most affected would be south and southeast of Lake Erie. And let's take a look at those snowfall totals. In fact, some of the areas coming in off the charts, we don't get above 36 inches. That's all we get greater than 36 inches in a huge swath here. So clearly some records broken in that area. Take a look at Vermont, the entire state for the most part, picking up eight or more inches everywhere. Totally amazing. And the entire uh, lake effect snow belt on Lake Erie here, picking up significant amounts up to 18 inches in many areas. So a significant lake event, even Michigan picking up some high totals up in the north here, 18 inches showing up as well. Here's the forecast. Heavy rainfall for Hawaii. Severe weather potential increasing across the south as well. Snowfall downwind of the Great Lakes will slowly diminish through the day. Hey, hey, it's in fact probably coming to a close now as I bloviate. A system tracking across California is forecast to intensify across the southern plains through Thursday. And we've got winter storm watches and warnings out here for the weekend. So that's good news. More moisture and more snow for the ski resorts. Severe weather and heavy rainfall are possible from eastern Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, through the lower Mississippi Valley into Friday. Meanwhile, Kona, a Kona low in the northwest of the Hawaiian Islands, will bring a chance of flash flooding and the destruction, well, of the GMO pineapple market. Who knew? Who knew? Now you do. Europe plunges to minus 34.5 C. 
which is actually colder than it is in Fahrenheit at minus 30.1 Fahrenheit. As heavy, November snow sweeps Britain and Bulgaria. Holy macaroni. Take a look. We just came off of record ice gain on Greenland the other day, over 10 gigatons of ice. And the fear mongers with, with the Antarctic ice extent continuing to push its way back into normal averages. Can you believe that? Well, I can. Here, let's take a look here at the Arctic ice extent looking pretty solid. And let's... Uh, is the Antarctic here? Yes, take a look there. Very close to the multi-decadal average. And the fear mongers will be silent as we... This is deepening into the summer for Antarctica, by the way. The total snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere also has been in record territory since the data set has been collected uh, at the end of October here. And you can see it stayed well above the average since 1982. Who knew? Now you do. Seismic update, very quiet across the country as we wait for a massive coronal hole from the sun to face Earth in just about two days. That could trigger massive earthquakes, in my opinion, in the next four to five days. So stay tuned for the boom. As time lapse shows lava brewing in the Kilauea caldera as we wait for the next imminent eruption. This is quite spectacular footage, albeit pretty low resolution there, isn't it? We're a wide volcano news update. Nothing much to report on Ducono to 10,000 feet, Santuito, Popo, Semaru, Bagana, and others. Semarud puffing to 14,000 feet today. Popo to 20,000. What else do we have here on the list? Manam in Papua New Guinea puffing to 7,000 feet. Bagana to 7,000 as well. Reventador to 15,000 feet. Fuego to 15. Popo again to 27. Kaya to 25. You get the picture. You picking it up? We just put it down. Liwotolol. In the Lesser Sunda Islands in Indonesia, Strombolian to volcanian explosions continue with viscous lava flow from the cinder cone and exceptionally blurry footage. The Reykjanes Peninsula, we are still waiting for potentially an imminent eruption. The likelihood of the eruption is still high. Seismicity is extremely low. Tremor also, it's been ramping down for days. So we're waiting for a change, perhaps, to signal that eruption up at the surface. But the big news is the incoming solar storm, the geomagnetic storm forecast to reach G3, geomagnetic storm, tomorrow at least. Here is the aurora forecast. It is sickening all of Alaska, all of Canada, and many of the northern states in 90% probability or higher. And the line of aurora visibility comes all the way down to Iowa, south, southern Iowa. I think that Arizona, North Texas could possibly see aurora tomorrow night. So get out and look up. As we keep a close eye on Discover Solar Wind, which will be the trigger for that geomagnetic storm incoming. Plasma speed is quite low down at below 450 no shifts in the BZ or the phi angle. So stay tuned for updates as the WSA Enlil spiral is showing multiple CMEs incoming. One, two, three, maybe a cannibal situation that's going to really bring this to a boom tomorrow night. So stay tuned for updates as the three-day geomagnetic forecast has been updated to G3 geomagnetic storm for December 1st. A December to remember, holy macaroni. Could this finally be humanity's first permanent lunar base? Well, under bilateral NASA agreement, the Italian Space Agency, we love the Italians, and the Thales Alina Space are collaborating to create the first permanent human habitat on the moon. And that is a permanent habitat on the moon boom. And here is the artist's representation of the multi-purpose habitat, the MPH. And well, and it's looking quite sporty. 740. Take a look. Look at that. And you can even see the not flat earth off in the distance. Quite beautiful. Now, the Thales Alina Space and Italian Space Agency are embarking on a pioneering venture to construct the first permanent human outpost 
on the moon, a critical component of NASA's Artemis program and our attempt to get to Mars, for goodness sakes. Who wouldn't want to live on a planet where you can't go outside ever and you'll probably die getting there? All the links will be below. Most dinosaurs were killed by climate change, says the mainstream article that I'm reading, but not a meteorite, according to a new study. Well, the new study actually blames it on the Deccan traps or perhaps an ongoing supervolcanic eruption which destroyed the climate, but not actually climate change in the way that most people that read this article would understand it, which makes it today's number one article. But I do digress. An interesting fake fact, the world... The word algorithm was named after former vice president of the United States, Al Gore. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. And in case you missed it, Elon Musk responding to the fact that major advertisers, including Disney, which, by the way, is tanking because of its woke policies, go woke, go broke. Well, let's take a looky here and see what Elon Musk had to say today. There was a public perception that that was part of a apology tour. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You don't want them to advertise? No. If somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. There's a public perception that that... Well, and that was Hey Bob to Bob Iger. And Elon Musk is based, and that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned because we share videos like that, and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support all the work we do. We love you. Be safe. Mm -hmm.